Hi guys, it's Sebastian here from Noble Frugal Studio, and today I want to do a little demonstration on coloring and painting of a background in Krita. Now, I put these into OpenTunes, however, all the backgrounds are painted in this software called Krita, another free software, and I'll leave the link to download it in the description. So, as you can see, I've already colored in some of the areas, and I'm going to do the rest right in front of you guys. I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about the process of making backgrounds for your animation. <laughs> like it's two words. Now, I have this picture that I made before, which I'm going to be taking colors from because I want to make sure everything's very consistent, which is one of the things you got to worry about when you do an animation. So, I'm going to start right here. So most of the time when I am animating Castle Dark, I do have two tabs open um, in Krita because it just helps me in order to make sure that everything is consistent. And that's really that's really the whole reason. Um, once I color it the first time, that's kind of the colors that I set. So yes, I've had that moment where I wish I could go back and redo some of the colors because um, right now I'm teaching myself about color theory because I, I was never good at using colors, I always drew in black and white and ink. I never did like experimenting with colors, and now that I'm experimenting with them, I'm finding how how important they are, and how beautiful I can make them. And that's exactly when, <clears throat> after the fact, when I've already laid out some of the colors. So it's kind of a bummer, but when I design some of the later concepts, like the King's Room in Castle Dark, that will be fun to do because I'll have my new knowledge of color theory and such. Um, one thing that I do want to address is whether or not when you're making an animation or an animation series, are you allowed to show the improvement that you've made while making the series? Like at the start of the first, the first five minutes looks horrible and you learn from that. And then the last two minutes look really, really good because you've learned all these lessons while animating. I think that's perfectly okay. Um, since it is such an early film in your career, it's okay to, to have these fluctuations in skill level. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, I mean, it's better than, it's not like you're getting worse, right? So I think that's perfectly okay. If you're, I definitely, my skill level has changed from, you can tell in the, one of the first paintings that I made for Castle Dark, the two first ones are nothing in comparison to the ones that I make now because I just didn't know. I wasn't aware of certain rules while painting and now I am aware of them. And that's okay. To, it's okay to improve. It's actually good that you improve it because that's kind of the reason you're doing it, right? In a way. Um, if you're making a series, you hope to improve because then you will attract more people. Um, another thing when you're making a short film like this is that it's very, it's going to be very helpful to keep your goal in mind. My goal, I have a lot of goals for Castle Dark, is to get open tunes recognized, um, to prove to myself that I can make a short film if I wanted to, and to develop my animation skills. Those are my three main goals as to why I'm making Castle Dark. And if you don't have those goals, you don't have a foundation as to why you're spending so much time on this film. And it can be kind of hard to get back to working on it. Not that there's no reason to work on it. It's plenty of reason to make a film. It's just out of sheer fun, maybe. I don't know. But it's hard to continue. It's hard to be consistent. That's one of my main issues as an artist forever. Ever since I was a kid, I never wanted to finish things. Never wanted to go back and keep working on it. Um, this, success, this is successfully the longest project I've ever worked on in my entire life for the same theme like it's the longest project I've ever worked on in, in my entire life no lie um, then again as a young artist it's easy to say that isn't it um, so let's back up here actually there we go <clears throat> yeah I I think that it's important to keep those goals in mind uh, whatever goals you have if you are doing this because you're low on cash we get it that's what open tunes is for and you need to get some cash in the bank maybe that's your maybe that's your drive um, Maybe that's why you, you keep animating. And if it is, all power to you. Let's 
call this rock and it wasn't there. Um, that's the reason you keep going, and that's definitely a motivating factor. So, um, it's very important to keep those whatever goals you have in mind. Okay, so we got most of the ceiling down. I'm gonna finish up this part next to the pipe. We can move on to another step, so, so something to talk about. We can talk about the schedule of Castle Dark. Now, they have undergone not too many changes. Um, and I did say Castle Dark is gonna come out in January, and that is still the plan. I'm working hard. Things are going pretty good. Uh, the first scene is already done. I think it's scene one out of nine. I think there are nine total scenes in Castle Dark. I didn't number them. I numbered mo some of them because they're part of a series. However, the other ones have separate names. So I think there are nine scenes. So one, it's one out of nine complete um, animation draft wise. And I'm working on two out of nine right now. It's, it's pretty fun though. It's, it's pretty good to see progress. I think that's also one of the things that's going to keep you going is if you see yourself make progress, visible progress. That's very important when you're an artist that's working on a, a a large project even small projects you need to have visible visible progress or you're just gonna quit all right so I'm gonna take a drink of water look at some colors and we'll move on and we'll move on to the next thing So by that, I don't mean that I can keep making these mistakes. Because if it if it's made once, then it's not that bad. But the whole point of this is that I keep learning from those mistakes, and in result, I become a better artist. Cool. We able to make better and bigger things. I do plan to use Open Tunes for at least the most of it because um that's what I want to do. I want to keep using Open Tunes because it's free. And I like it. It's decent. It has a, all the features I need, and even more. Let's see. Let me. What color am I gonna make this imaginary pot that didn't even exist before this moment? Technically within continuity. I just have forgotten to draw it at the time. I'm going to make this pot a blue color. No. What color am I gonna make the pot? Let's see. Make it the same color as the grill. Did I color the grill in this? Is it even here? Yeah, it's this color. Maybe we can just make it that color and no one will even know. More of a peach. You can hear my, I don't know if you guys can hear my computer going. Oh my goodness. Sounds like a workhorse. Recording and drawing at the same time. What a load. Oh, I've forgotten to save. Keep saving guys, another tip. Keep saving, keep saving your project until you feel like you've saved it too much. That's when you, that's when you saved it enough. Hit save. I actually save all my background, the backgrounds I make for Castle Dark on a separate drive, so. I just feel like animation software are just so ex expensive. And it's, it's just a, an excessive investment to buy one. Because, I mean, the equipment isn't already, is already isn't cheap. Equipment for animation is not cheap. And digital art equipment is just not cheap. So why would uh, spending that much money on animation software doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I already spent that money to get the equipment. Shouldn't at least one of them be less than the other? Since they're all really expensive. Everything, the software, the tools. One of them has to be not expensive, right? One of them has to be at least and uh, less of a pain of the neck. And in this case, neither of them are less of a pain in the neck. So that's why OpenTunes makes the software end less of a pain in the neck, at least. If you decide to buy a Wacom Cintiq, which um, I have no qualms about because I never, I never owned one. Um, that way you can spend your money on getting a nice 
um, a nice tool, and the software won't cost you anything. So it's just one of the, it's just that they're both so expensive. It doesn't make sense to spend on both of them. So that's the end of this coloring demonstration in Krita. And yeah, so we did a really good job. Everything seems to be spick and span, except for this one area that I just noticed as I'm looking it over um, around the rock. You need to clean this up. There we go. Um, make sure that surveillance is on your schedule when you're making paintings. So thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching because um, even though this video was <laughs> pretty boring, just me coloring things around. In the next video, we're going to be focusing on lighting and shading, and then actually no, it might be texture. I don't know. Well, there's lighting, shading, and texture to do, and adjusting the contrast in our picture to do as well. So whatever comes first or next for that matter, I hope you guys look forward to it and definitely click on it when it comes out. Watch out for my live streams, guys, because I'm going to be doing a lot of tests, and I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear what you're doing. Um, right now, I want to know where you live. I'm just joking. Anyway, thank you guys for, for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.